For a more dependable, durable, and capable tractor, check out the lineup of high horsepower Massey Ferguson equipment. The 7700 S Series tractor is loaded with features to increase your comfort and productivity. And if you run a dairy farm, the RB Series balers are built to handle everything your operation demands. Straightforward, dependable Massey Ferguson equipment. Visit MasseyFerguson.com to find out more. Welcome to Inside Farm Life, your weekly connection to agriculture newsmakers, hot button industry issues, educational features, and the best in true country music. Now, here's your host, Brent Adams. Well, welcome to a special edition of Inside Farm Life, live from Farm Progress Show 2021, presented by AgCo. On this week's show, we talk with Kurt Blades of the Association of Equipment Manufacturers about the strength of the farm equipment industry. We also hear about some new product releases from Fent and Massey Ferguson. Also, Corn Warriors Season 5 debuts next week on RFD TV, and we talk with some of this season's competitors. We talk live with Market Talk's Jesse Allen. Finally, we catch up with Nashville singer-songwriter Adam Warner, who's been performing here at the Farm Show in the Farm Credit Pavilion. We thank you for joining us this week. First up on Inside Farm Life, it's my pleasure to bring in Kurt Blades, who is the Senior Vice President of Agriculture and Forestry for the Association of Equipment Manufacturers. And Kurt, welcome into Inside Farm Life. No, thanks for having me on today. So for the folks who aren't familiar with AEM, tell, tell us a bit about the organization's mission. So AEM is the Association of Equipment Manufacturers. Uh, we represent off-road equipment in five sectors, ag, construction, forestry, mining, and utilities. So when you talk about off-road equipment, you know, we're sitting here in uh, in a booth with some with some beautiful tractors and combines, uh, but we also represent uh, cranes and bulldozers and mining equipment, forestry equipment, basically anything that uh, that works off road and does industrial equipment off road. And our job uh, representing those organizations would be doing things such as uh, uh, helping with their advocacy efforts, their lobbying efforts, helping to manage regulatory affairs, uh, working on uh, market share data, market share statistics to help folks make good, intelligent business decisions. We also uh, are in the trade show business. Uh, on the construction side, we have uh, North America's largest trade show in Con Expo Con Ag. It's a uh, construction construction show. Uh, and then here in a couple of weeks, we're going to be doing the utility expo in Louisville. And then finally, one of the initiatives that uh, hopefully we can have a chance to talk about today is uh, we are really helping our members uh, embrace sustainability and recognizing that it is no longer a uh, either or, uh, either sustainability or economic benefit, but in fact, with some of the great technology that's on display here at Farm Progress Show and other places, it's both. You can be sustainable and have good economic benefit when you take advantage of good technology. Well, that's such an important factor because it is more than just a buzzword. We've heard it as a buzzword, but, but obviously we see manufacturers individually taking it so much more seriously and making that known. You bet, you bet. And what's really excited about this, honestly, Brent, is when you look at uh, you know farmers making a uh, a noticeable change in attitude and in, in uh, wanting to, to to address some of the you know some of the challenges that are facing society bigger. I mean, I think there's a lot of attention given to the ag industry, and not all of it has been positive. But when we look at uh, you know sort of. Uh, uh, for longer term solutions, you know, here's the simple fact. You really can't sequester carbon without plants. And you can't really grow plants without farmers. So we're part of the solution, whether we want to be or not. And it's pretty exciting because it seems as if there's a lot of attention played to our market where we might even be able to take some, get some financial gain by participating in these markets. So the conversations I've been having here on on the, on the show floor have been fascinating. We talked about carbon markets and technology and what this industry is gonna look like in the next five to 10 years. It's pretty exciting. Uh, and through all that, the industry has had to navigate the challenges of COVID over the last year and a half. How have the members of AEM navigated that and, and how is that an ongoing challenge that they're dealing with? Well, it's, it's, a, it's a, that's a tough question because you know, the, the short answer is we've done our best. Right. Uh, you know, two years ago, uh, we were we were dealt a blow. The entire economy was dealt a blow. The good news is the, uh, the ag industry and specifically ag equipment were quickly designated as essential businesses. That makes a really big difference. That made a big difference in our ability to keep factories open, 
and to be able to keep the dealerships open, to keep the supply chains open as best we possibly could, to make sure that the crops get planted into the ground. And, uh, and so that, that was number one. Then number two, what we found is that during the, during the pandemic, uh, actually tractor and combine sales um, uh, have been really solid. The demand has been very strong, whether it is uh, you know, the under 40 horsepower tractors for, uh, for acreages or large row crop tractors for uh, traditional farmers, the market's been pretty strong. So you couple that increased demand with what are well-publicized supply chain issues across the board, whether it's tractors or pinball machines, uh, there are tight supplies out there. You buy every ag dealer lot, they're a little, they're a little tight, they're a little, little light on inventory. And, uh, but what our manufacturers have been very aggressive to do during the pandemic and during the supply chain challenges is to prioritize things like wear parts, prioritize things like uh, uh, you know, the, the, the parts and the equipment that's needed to make sure that we get the crop in the ground or we get the, the, the grain out of the field. Uh, because if you don't harvest or if you don't plant, it's kind of difficult to make money as a farmer. So our manufacturers have really done a nice job of prioritizing that way. That was certainly still, you know, we'd love to be able to, to fill every order as quickly as we can. But, uh, you know, as, as we mentioned, it's, it's, uh, it's kind of just the, the reality that we're living in right now with, uh, with our supply chain tightness across the board. If you're wanting to make a new purchase, you probably have to do a little bit of planning ahead. And some of that may be here for a while. As you start to look ahead to 2022, what are some of the priorities that are going to be on the plate of AEM? Well, 2022, you know, obviously we always, uh, you know, let me back up and say what, what's been our priority for 2021, and it does spill over into 2022. 2021, our, our, one of our big priorities has been a focus on the infrastructure bill, the infrastructure package. AEM is, is largely one of the leaders of uh, advocating for infrastructure in Washington, D.C., uh, certainly for our construction business, but also for our ag business when talking about things like rural broadband and good roads and bridges to be able to deliver grain and good equipment to, to farm areas. Uh, so that's so infrastructure has been very important for us. As we look to 2022, that's going to continue on uh, as being a high priority because hopefully we'll have a good infrastructure bill in place. And then we'll begin to look at the implementation and tweaking that to make sure that, that that all makes sense. Another piece that's going to continue to be a priority in 2022 and beyond is a focus in on technology, and specifically technology as it helps to solve sustainability uh, issues. As I mentioned at the very beginning of this conversation, it's not a question of either or anymore. It's, you know, you can, you can advance, it, you know, adopt new precision agriculture and farming and also deliver some really nice environmental benefits as a ride-along. So our priority is going to be continue to focus towards the interoperability of this equipment, to continue to promote that uh, adoption of the technology, perhaps even looking at uh, you know things that may be out there if there are incentives to, uh, to help, farmer, help a farmer uh, uh, adopt uh, environmental, uh, environmental practices uh, in their farming operation. Perhaps there's room for that to also exist on the equipment side as well. So we'll be continuing to focus on that uh, in the ag sector specifically, because I'll tell you what, it's a lot of fun to talk about new technology. And uh, when we talk to folks that may have never been on a farm before, they get the technology and they love seeing big technology in action. And it makes a difference uh, in terms of, you know, perhaps some uh, uh, regulatory decisions that are taking a look at or looking at farming in a slightly different way as part of the solutions rather than being an organ, uh, an industry with a, with a uh, target on our back. Well, we talk about those uh, new equipment sales here. Well, what are some of the biggest growth areas that, that we're seeing? The growth area that we've seen for the last year, year, uh, year and a half has been the small tractor market, under 40 horsepower tractor market. Uh, it has been on fire. In fact, we we're up about 20% uh, for the year, and we were up significantly this time last year as well. That's largely, you know, frankly, due to the pandemic, where you've had, uh, you know, folks that uh, have have an acreage or have a suburban uh, a suburban home and wanting to invest a little bit more in their property because they've spent more time at home. They're buying tractors. We love that. Uh, that's been a nice growth area. But I'll tell you what, the uh, the other growth areas that have been really interesting are things like the seeding market. 
because of the new technology that's out there in the seeding market, we've seen a lot of growth in cedar in cedar sales. Uh, combines are another area. Man, there are so many advances in technologies and new models that are coming out in the harvesting market that allow farmers to, to get their crops out of the field even more efficiently. So we're seeing those as growth areas. And then the continual growth area that is, you know, you know, I think still on a, on a, on a hockey, hockey stick in terms of, of its growth is everything that has to do with precision agriculture. When you have a tractor that knows where it is in the field and you begin to think of that tractor as a data collection tool, boy, those, uh, those opportunities become limitless of what, it can, what can come out of that. And so we're continuing to see a pretty dramatic growth in the interest and uh, as well as the purchase and adoption of uh, precision ag equipment broadly defined. Then you go over and look at the uh, demonstration fields over there and you see a lot of this autonomous equipment here, the, the next generation of stuff, and that, that really gets you to pondering, doesn't it? Oh, it really does. I mean, I, you, you don't have to get too far into the future to think about a tractor that drives itself, you know, truly drives itself, and uh, without, it, without a farmer in the cab. And so when you think about that, perhaps solving labor shortages or making the, the operation a little bit more efficiency, it's really fascinating. So you think about how much, how much of this big equipment that we're looking at today um, is, has, been, has, been, has grown in size because we want it to be more efficient. We want it to be more efficient because the, the window is short and the uh, uh, labor is always in tight supply. So you have bigger equipment. When all of a sudden you remove that variable of labor, it sort of changes the paradigm on maybe what equipment size looks like. Maybe uh, you know the design looks very different when a, when a machine doesn't have to have an operator or when uh, you know the, the wheels are powered by something besides an internal combustion engine. Now we're several years away from some of these realities, but boy, when you start stretching your mind on what those opportunities are, it's crazy to think what, what, uh, what ag's gonna look like in the next you know, five, 10, 15, 20 years. Uh, it's fun to think about that, and it's fun to think about following it every step of the way here, and it's always a joy to do that. And it's always a joy to talk with you. If folks want to know more about the mission of AEM, where can they go to do that? The best place for people to go to learn a little bit more about AEM is to go to AEM.org. On there, you'll find a whole lot of information that we make available to the public, as well as a good collection of curated content from the industry and news. Uh, and then if you're, uh, if you're so inclined, follow us on social media. We're always updating what's going on around the world uh, in the equipment market in all five of our sectors. Uh, we're, we're thrilled to be a part of the ag community, and we love, we love telling the story and certainly encourage folks to, to engage with us both online as well as in social media. And they put out some great statistics about the latest in, in equipment sales, so make sure you pay attention to that. And Kurt, thank you so much for taking the time to join us here on Inside Farm Life. We'd love for you to come back you bet. again to keep this discussion going. You bet. Thanks for the time today. And we've been talking with Kurt Blades, the Senior Vice President of Agricultural and Forestry for the Association of Equipment Manufacturers. And now, what is your goat saying? <laughs> that is a pretty sweet shirt you got on there. Did you get that from GoatLifeClothing.com? Very humorous and stylish. No, you cannot eat this shirt. I know it looks tasty. GoatLifeClothing.com. Well, next up here on Inside Farm Life, we want to bring in David Fickles, the Senior Marketing Manager for Application Products for Fent. And he has been around one of the hottest items here in the Fent position at Farm Progress Show 2021, and that is the Rogator. First of all, David, welcome into Inside Farm Life. Hey, thanks so much, Brent. Thanks for having us. What is it about this big, green, beautiful machine that just draws people in like a magnet? <laughs> yeah, well, so you know, here at Agco, we have two really great brands. You've, you've got Fent, right? And there's a lot of history there. A lot of same way with Rogator, right? A lot of history behind that name, you know, built in Jackson, Minnesota. And we wanted to bring those two brands together and help fill out this, this family of Fent products. Products, right so we've got tractors we've got planters combines and now we're bringing that sprayer in and what's very unique about this sprayer brand is is that it's a high clearance machine and a standard clearance machine so we've got you know two different segments of, of, of rigs there we are now combining that into one with a push of a button it'll raise you up and it'll also bring you down 
And because of that, this is an all-season high-clearance machine, which means you can run this thing all season long, all year round. That's right. That's right. Yeah, so so with that versatility, you know, that's that's key, right? So we can take this machine, we can keep it in, I'll say, standard clearance mode and, and maybe run some, some spring fertilizer. Uh, we can come in and maybe do some pre-work, some post-work when the crop is still pretty short. Uh, but when that crop maybe, let's say you're looking at corn and that tassels out, you want to be able to come in and maybe put a fungicide down, right? What do we do? We take the Fent Rogator 900 series, we hit our button on our terminal, we raise that machine up 16 inches, and then we can come in and put that fungicide down. Then maybe in the fall, let's say we want to drop it back down and, and maybe put some, some fall application on, we can put dry down as well. And I think that's the other unique thing with this machine brand is we can do both dry, uh, liquid, as well as air, air systems. So really, really versatile machine here. And folks need to know that when you are dealing with Fent, the... Uh the experience doesn't end after the sale. You guys carry this thing through and you, you kind of walked hand in hand with them, you know, throughout their customer experience. And what does that mean to Fent? Yeah, so so the Fent family of products here, anybody that's a current Fent owner is, is probably used to it. They'll recognize the name Gold Star. Uh, but for folks who aren't familiar with that, Gold Star is a, is a full coverage warranty and maintenance package, right? So on the Rogator, it's a three year or 2000 hour package right? So you, you get all your service covered, you get your maintenance covered, and you have the warranty included as well. So we want to take care of that customer from the day they purchase uh, to, the, to the end of that cycle there. We want to make sure that they're happy with it. We want to make sure they enjoy the machine. And, and we're all about uptime, right? We don't want the customer to be down. So there's some other parts of, of Gold Star that come into it that help keep that customer up and running, uh, like machine loaner programs and parts assurance programs. So we're pretty proud of that. Uh, that's a big part of coming to the Fent family of products for the Rogator. Well, people spend long hours in these machines. Talk a bit about the creature comforts and some of the things that make it uh, user friendly and uh, make you want to spend more time in that cab. Yeah, that's that's right. So, folks, uh, like I said, people who have been in Fent tractors before, you'll immediately recognize the cab. Uh, it's a Fent 700 cab, which we're really, really excited to have. Uh, one of the best filtration systems on the market, if not the best. Uh, great, great operator environment. You've got rear-mounted booms, which keeps you know the visibility way open in the front. So you've got plenty of space to look around, make sure everything's good. You've got great visibility going down the road. Uh, you're going to have a lot of creature comforts in there. Um, you've got uh, different different parts and, and different components of the machine, and it's all tied into one. There's more glass now. Um, you've got a great air ride seat on there. So just a lot of small things that add up to a great operator environment uh, in the new Rogator 900 series. Since you've been here at the Farm Show, what are some of the common questions that you get from folks that have been passing through the booth? Yeah, uh, some of the common questions we're finding, and we've been out at the ride and drives a little bit too, is, uh, you know, what, well, how hard is it? What do, what do I have to do to raise and lower this thing? It go, you know, they're first of all, they're surprised it goes up and down. Folks, it's as simple as pushing a button. I mean, it really is that simple. You hit that button, the machine will raise up 16 inches. You hit the same button, it'll drop down. Uh, both cycles themselves take a little less than 30 seconds. So really, really cool to see folks' faces uh, when they see that time cycle and they realize how fast uh, this machine can, can go up and down. Well, David, if folks want to know more about it and they didn't have the chance to make it here to the show, where can they see this thing and uh, where can they learn more about it? Go to Fent.com. All right. Well, we've been speaking with David Fickle, Senior Marketing Manager for Application Products for Fent. And David, thank you so much for taking the time to join us here on Inside Farm Life. Hey, appreciate it, Brent. Anytime. And next up here on Inside Farm Life from the Farm Progress Show, I want to welcome in Kevin Forth, who's the Senior Marketing Manager Tactical with Fent. And he's been standing in front of the Fent Ideal 10T, which is the largest combine in North America. As we sit, I'm looking over at it, and there's quite a crowd around it. And uh, uh, Kevin, welcome into Inside Farm Life. Hey, appreciate it. Thanks. What is it about that combine that just draws people in? Well, I mean, I think, uh, you know, first of all, uh, you know, the, the black combine, I don't, I don't know, I, I, you hear that comment all the time, you know, it just looks so darn good out there. And uh, then as soon as people realize that, hey, it is the 10, it's the largest combine out there, uh, it just draws people in, you know, it's uh, 790 horsepower. I mean, it just, it's like, wow, you know. It looks ideal. Yeah, it does look ideal. You're right. You're right. So what about this combine sets it apart from others in its class? Yeah, so it's, uh, you know, of course, like we just said, you know, it's the biggest one out there, right? So the twin rotors, 16 feet long each, uh, you know, tons of capacity, uh, the, the big horsepower, the fast unload. I mean, uh, just everything is uh, first in class, really, you know, so. 
So tell me a bit about uh, the productivity of this machine, because I know that's so important, not only in the field, but from field to field, because time is money. Yeah, no, that's right. Uh, yeah, the, the long rotors, uh, for sure, give it uh, a lot of flexibility, uh, you know, uh, whether it's crops, conditions, whatever it might be. You have a ton of time for everything to happen in there. You know, uh, so many of the other rotors on the market are, are short and uh, everything has just got to happen so quick and so aggressively. We give so much more time for that to happen, so much more open great area, uh, just a lot of flexibility with this combine. So tell me about, uh, you know, one of the, the big things that we look at is efficiency in the field and making sure that uh, you're getting in the most grain possible. How, how does this machine achieve that? Yeah, it's just super, super efficient engines. Uh, use the MAN engines on, on these machines, and uh, they are super fuel efficient. Uh, you know, we've seen it in the field time and time again. We win every fuel study that we've done. Uh, they, you know, just the efficiency of the drive, and with the twin rotor, it really evenly divides the load, and it just makes for a super fuel efficient uh, machine. And we've talked about this with a couple of your other counterparts, but what about ease of use for the farmer? Yeah, uh, so it almost doesn't get any easier than this. So uh, I don't know if you've been over to take a look, but this particular machine does not even have a steering wheel. So we've got ideal drive on this machine. Uh, it's a joystick steering. Uh, it's the first one in the industry. And uh, really, you just sit back, relax, uh, put your feet up on the foot pegs, and uh, run it with a joystick. And uh, of course, you engage your auto steer when you get straight, and away you go. So super easy. And we're coming up on the uh, the generation here that grew up uh, heavy into video games here, so that joystick is something that should be plenty familiar to operators. Right, right. Yeah, it kind of feels that way, but uh, you know, there's a practical use to it as well because uh, you know we actually did a study, a university study, that showed that it reduces the fatigue by up to 60% for the operator. And uh, anybody that's run a combine for any length of time will understand that you're uh, when you're running the steering wheel, you're kind of hunched over, looking, trying to. You know, see what the what the crop is coming in the front, and with this machine, you actually sit back, relax, and you just run the steering with your uh, left hand there, and it's super comfortable. What about some of the other creature comforts in this machine? Yeah, so we have, uh, of course, Ideal Harvest, which is our automation system. If you're uh, into that thing, uh, you know, it takes all the trouble out of the the entire uh, operation. You know, the machine can set itself. You know, based on the conditions that it's in, it'll make the adjustments and settings for you if you want. Uh, of course, we've already talked about auto steer. I mean, it's getting to be standard anymore on, on pretty much everything, but, uh, you know, it takes all the stress of steering completely. We have a new feature, which uh, is called Auto Dock, which makes it, you know, it's the industry's first uh, touch-free uh, header attachment system. So you literally just hook, uh, hook up the head, I mean, uh, scoop it up, and then push a button on the screen, and it does all of the drive lines, all the electrics, all the hydraulics, and the latches for the head. It does it all, and you've never left the cab. You literally, in five seconds, just tap a screen, and it you're ready to harvest. So for folks who can't get to the Farm Progress show, where can they go check this thing out? Sure, yeah, it's all on the website, uh, fent.com, and uh, yeah, look, us, look for us there for sure. A lot to like about this here, and Kevin, we really appreciate you taking the time to join us here on Inside Farm Life to break it all down for us. Yeah, sure. Sure appreciate it. Thanks. Well, next here at Inside Farm Life, we want to welcome in Adam Sills, who's the marketing product specialist for Massey Ferguson Tractors. And Adam, welcome in to Inside Farm Life. Yeah, thanks for having me, Brent. He's been one of the busier guys on the Agco lot here this week. Uh, one of the big rollouts here at Farm Progress 2021 has been the Massey Ferguson 8S. They've had a steady stream of folks around that thing, and boy, it's, it's something to behold. Yeah, so this is we're really excited about this product. This is one of the most ambitious redesigns of a high horsepower Massey tractor in, in modern history for us. And so what what the design engineers have done is they took existing parts of our successful drivetrains, so like the engine and the transmission, and they asked a lot of farmers, okay, this is this is we've got this the powertrain down, we've got this stuff down. What what else do you need? What what makes what do you want to see out of this tractor? How do what do you care about when you're operating that tractor? And they interviewed big farmers, small farmers, custom applicators, and what they've what they've come up with was it's really all about the cab experience. They're in these tractors, long, hard days. They need to see, be able to see. They need to be comfortable when they get out of the seat, turn right around and do it again the next day. And so 
the big focus with this tractor is that operator experience. Right, and they need to be an extension of the operator, and the one thing that we always focus in on here is ease of use. T tell me about some of the thought that's gone into that that makes these things uh, very intuitive for the user. Yeah, I kind of joke when I talk with people. I say, I think they might have talked to some of the mobile phone application developers because when you get in there, you kind of get a little overwhelmed. Buttons are in a little different place. It's kind of laid out a little different from previous Massey tractors. The more you drive it, the more I get, every time I get into that thing, it gets easier and easier to drive. There's, there's, you know, when I've operated other tractors, if you want to get in there and change the setting when you're bouncing through the field, sometimes you can kind of get lost in the menu structure. Sometimes you can change something and be like, oh no, what did I do? How do I, what, how do I change that back? You, you kind of get lost. But the Massey Ferguson designers of that uh, Datatronic tractor display have really laid it out very intuitively. If you want to get in there, and change something when you're bouncing through the field, a couple clicks, boom, you've got it changed and you're back out. And it's super, super simple. One thing we always talk about here is ROI, and uh, that goes back to efficiency, which goes back to power, and this is a powerful tractor. Yeah, so this, this tractor has a new Dyna e-power transmission. So we've taken our successful um, power shift transmission and put a um, two, uh, dual clutch in front of it, and so now, when we shift, when we're shifting between gears in the field, we're not getting that torque interruption. That's when you go you jump up a gear, you jump down a gear, and you feel that jolt. That's a torque interruption. With the dual clutch system, you don't have that. So you're, you've, you're providing constant torque and your pulling performance is better. It's not jolting the drivetrain and then effectively jolting the operator. And so it's very, very, very efficient power to the ground transmission. Well, not only efficient there, but also efficient uh, in the fuel department, which is important to the pocketbook. Yeah, ADCO power engines are some of the most efficient uh, engines out there. We use them across a lot of ADCO products, both on our own pro on our own machines, and then also we sell them in industrial applications, and they're around the world known for their fuel efficiency. So when you get out here, what are some of the common questions that folks ask you about these tractors? Well, one of the things uh, with the new styling of this tractor, they kind of, they ask, you know, that almost kind of looks like my my uh, great grandpa's um, Massey 135. And that's exactly what the designers have done is they kind of, you know, Massey's got a strong tractor heritage and they really wanted to play on that and the redesign the styling. And so that's something that people have really been excited to walking up to the tractors. This looks like tractor yesteryear and then it's got styling, the, the gray cab structure and the squared off fenders reminds guys of some of the, the Massey Ferguson 2600 and 3000 series. I bet you hear some really great recollections when you get into those conversations, don't you? Oh yeah, it's, it's you know, I love talking tractors and, you know, even if we're talking about tractors today or tractors yesteryear, it's, it's being at the farm show is great to talk to anybody about past, present, future, um, their plans on tractors and the farm. Well, why is now the right time to get into a new 8S? Right now is great because we have we have great availability. We're getting ready. We've they've ramped up production there. We're kind of getting out of this um, this COVID lull where there was some you know supply chain issues and stuff. And so there's a we're about ready to get a boatload of these over here. We're super excited. Our dealers excited. We've got a lot of orders. We're out there ready to fill and ready to hit spring rolling with these machines. Well, for folks who can't make it to the Farm Progress show, where can they check these machines out? Best place would be our website, so MasseyFerguson.us, or follow social media all fall. We're going to have a lot of new videos coming about how to operate these machines, some of the stuff on the features, and hopefully some uh, customer testimonials when we have it out there for fall tillage. Excellent. So make sure you go check that out. And Adam, we thank you so much for taking the time to join us here on Inside Farm Life. We'd love for you to come back here yeah. again in the future and uh, give us the latest updates here from Massey Ferguson. Yeah, thanks a lot. And we've been talking with Adam Sills, the marketing product specialist for Massey Ferguson Tractors. Many companies promise increased yields and a higher return on investment, but again and again, results show that one company stands apart from the rest. Concept Agritech delivers innovative concepts utilizing the latest technologies in agronomy, biology, and chemistry to enhance soil and plant health with seed treatment, planter applied fertilizers, foliar fertilizers, and full season soil treatment solutions. To find out how to put Concept Agritech to work for you, visit conceptagritech.com. Concept Agritech technology where you need it most. Well, next up here on Inside Farm Life from Farm Progress Show 2021, Decatur, Illinois. While we were here at the show, we've had a chance to catch up with members of the Corn Warriors TV show. 
Season 5 is going to be starting on RFD TV on Thursday, September 9th. And uh, we talked to a number of the folks, including the Corn King from Season 4, Kevin Cobb of Dubois, Indiana. Man, welcome into the show. Hey, I'm glad, glad to be here today. So, man, we're making our way through the summertime here. We're getting ready for this season opener of Corn Warriors. It's going to be on here uh, shortly. Uh, what can we expect out of this new season? Well, one, one thing about farming, you know, uh, every year is different. You know, whenever you think you got something figured out, Mother Nature throws a curveball at you. So, um, you know, I think it's up in the air who's going to be the king this year. You know, it could be anybody's this year. Everybody's had some different adver adversity this year. And, um, you know, I don't know. I'm kind of excited. Well, you talk about weather, man. That really has been kind of the story of this summer here. How have you guys dealt with it where you're at? So we kind of had a, I don't know if you call it a average year or a normal year for weather. We we flooded out early, and then we got dry, and then we flooded out again. You know, we didn't get a, a nice rain. And then, I uh, hate to say it, the last six weeks now, uh, we only had an inch and three tenths. And then Monday, this last Monday, we, we got bombarded with six and a half inches from Hurricane Ida, met with a cold front right on top of us, and we got six and a half inches in an hour and a half. So, you know, it did not, it did not blow any corn down, um, but, you know, I'm sure it didn't do it any good. Right, right. <laughs> So how have cha things changed for you from season one of this show to this upcoming season? Well, you know, the biggest thing is, uh, I, and I mean this, uh, probably the friendship is getting be better and better with all the, the competitors. You know, um, you know, actually we come up here to the progress show this year. We got Brooks with us. Um, you know, we got to be pretty good friends. You know, our farming pattern our, our philosophy is still the same, you know, we wide drop two by two, but, you know, as far as the fertility of it, yeah, we've changed a little, but the, the main principles are still the same. Mm -hmm. I know we've talked about this before, but the MAC group, that's something that you've gotten really involved in and how it expand along the way. How has that changed the game for you? Well, you know, we've always said that we've made a lot of mistakes growing some of this corn that uh, we're pushing on these high yields. and had tons and tons of mistakes, tons, a lot of money we wasted. And, uh, you know, now we feel like we've, we've got a pretty good handle on what it takes to grow good corn and ROI corn, you know, what nutrients need to be there. And, and you know, the main thing is, you know, helping guys out, you know, uh, just not to, to waste money like we did on products that don't work. Um, you know, bottom line is we, we want to help guys better ROI and, and part of that is just raise better corn, being more efficient on, on the nutrients that you need. Mm -hmm. And I asked Dan this, I'll ask you this too, in terms of people approaching you since you've been on the show and, and raised your visibility, what's that look like in terms of folks uh, approaching you with different products they want you to try out and, and how willing are you to, to look at different things and explore? So we, we never say no, you know, um, you know, we always try different products, you know, might be, we still not found that magic bullet, that silver bullet to, to do it. But, you know, maybe there is something out there we're missing. But, um, you know, we like I said, there probably ain't too many companies left that we haven't tried. So, um, yeah, if you got a product, we'll be more than happy to try it. <laughs> so what is it that keeps driving you here from year to year? Just the, the competitive to win. Yeah. You know, uh, um, just I'm getting old. I can't play sports no more. And. Um, you know, I got that competitive edge. I don't think it'll ever go. And, you know, anybody says they don't like winning yeah. um, will normally be the first loser. I mean, it's, you know, winning means a lot to us. And, um, you know, that, that definitely 100% helps, helps us on our drive. Did you ever imagine as a young man uh, farming as a competitive sport? Oh, no. <laughs> you know, and that's, you know, I hate to say this. I'm, I'm 46 years old now. I've been been farming on my own since I was 19 years old and and you know yeah we always in the neighborhood try to see who, who could grow the best corn but to actually to be able to take it to a, the national stage has been a, a blessing you know in disguise for us uh, you know because it just changed everything on our whole management on, on our farm yeah you know 
Even beyond that, it's taking you to some cool places, hasn't it? Oh, the the, the places, I mean, uh, especially from the show, you know, Corn Warrior show, uh, you know, like today we're at the Progress show, you know, we probably had 15, 20 people come up to, to me and Brooks and say, hey, you know, guys on the Corn Warrior show. So, but as far as the main thing is meeting people. I mean, yeah, we went to the cool places, seen a lot of the country, been in Canada over it, and um, hopefully be going to South Africa um, if the COVID restrictions come off. But uh, the main thing is meeting people, you know, good people. And, you know, that's something that's actually more valuable to us than winning any contest, just being able to meet good farmers. It's always a pleasure to talk to a fellow Dubois County, Indiana resident here, the, the pride of uh, Dubois, Indiana. Kevin, it's uh, great to uh, catch up with you and look forward to talking with you again further down the road here. Hey, I appreciate it. You guys having us on. And now we want to talk to his partner in crime, Brooks Cardinal, out of Oaktown, Indiana, a competitor on the Corn Warriors here, his third season here. And Brooks, welcome into Inside Farm Life. Hey, how's it going? It is going great, man. I tell you what, you're out here enjoying the beautiful weather, enjoying the show. Uh, what have you seen so far that you like? You know, first of all, it's great to get away. Um, we are experiencing some great weather here. Um, it's been a while since I've been at this show, and since the last time I've been to one of these shows, man, it's, it's impressive. It's a lot bigger than what I remember, but, but yeah, we're enjoying it here. So season five of Corn Warriors is kicking off here. What can folks expect out of this season? You know, this year has been a pretty good year for us. Um, overall, you know, we we started good. Everything was pretty smooth. Um, had, you know, some pretty decent timely rains. Um, you know, we're really, really excited about what this year is going to have to bring. But, I mean, these last two weeks is what we're worried about. You know, we've experienced a lot of heat. And here, you know, in that period, we're grain filling. And we all know how important that grain fill is and trying to, trying to uh, determine the weight on that kernel. So a little bit nervous about, you know, how bad that hurt us. But overall, I think we're going to have a decent crop. So when we first met, you were getting ready to be on your first season, now your third season. What, what's changed from year one to year three for you? Oh, just a lot more comfortable, I guess, uh, on camera. Um, you know, it, it's still not easy, but it's getting easier. So, you know, just trying to have fun with it. And for you, it's all about family, and uh, you know, we see this next generation of, of Cardinal kids coming up here. That's got to be quite a blessing to see all those young ones getting involved and taking some of the heat off of old dad, huh? That's the plan. Yeah, it's it's fun. I mean, Dallas is 15. He'll be 16 in January, and, you know, he'll be getting his license. He's been truck shopping now, and I tell you, now's not a good time to truck shop is what I've learned. and. You know, he's been great help. He can do about whatever he wants. Um, and, you know, then there's kicks. He's 12, getting ready to be 13, and he's really stepping up, doing a lot more. And and um, not only that, my brother's got three younger boys. And, uh, you know, that's what we're excited about. we got a heck of a crew. You know, if if uh, you know if they want the opportunity to come back to the farm, we got a heck of a crew. And so we're excited about that. That's kind of what drives us to uh, keep going and work so hard and make room for all them guys. And work them hard enough that they stay out of trouble, right? <laughs> that's that's the toughest part, especially with my two, and especially kicks. Maybe he's a he's a bit of a daredevil, but he likes to have fun. <laughs> well, I tell you what, we can't wait to see all of that play out here in uh, season five of Corn Warriors, which is kicking off here. And man, it's always a delight to get to catch up with you. Yeah, same here. No, it's been great meeting all you guys, and that's the one thing with the show that I can't think enough is just the relationships I've gained, the people I've met. I mean, that's how I met Kevin, and we became really good friends and talked quite often, and, you know, friendship is the one thing that you can't replace, and, you know, that, uh, it's all to the show. Excellent. Well, we value yours, and uh, we can't wait to, to watch you on Season 5 of Corn Warriors and catch up with you further on down the road, probably at the uh, coronation ceremony here uh next winter we'll see what what shakes out there yeah it'll be here before we know it um hopefully we got something for kevin this year i don't know a little bit nervous about it so uh he's a hard one to catch on the on the yield there so we'll see well hopefully he hasn't dirtied up that throne too much in his shop here and uh you know who knows where that thing may end up here in a few months yeah who knows where that thing's been so uh, <laughs> i think we need to buy a new one <laughs> We'll, we'll uh, have to talk to Seth Wood, the creator of the show, about that. But, again, thank you so much, and we'll catch you down the road. All right. Thanks a lot.
I'm back at the Farm Progress Show 2021, Decatur, Illinois. Now it's my pleasure to bring in Corey Atley. You've seen him on uh, Corn Warriors and the Podfather TV shows. And uh, he, he's here uh, with a new operation here, Advanced Yield Select Cropped Inputs. Corey, welcome in to Inside Farm Life. Hey, thank you. Thank you. Appreciate it. Uh, so tell us a bit about what you got here at the show. Uh, we're set up here in the VIT tent on uh, 5th Street. Uh, Van Shield Select Crop Inputs, we started this year. We're selling a full array of water conditioners, water adjuvants, nitrogen stabilization, or uh, stabilizations. We have a lot of different bi biologicals, uh, liquid carbon, humic acid, fulvic acids, anything that you would want for your inferro, two by two, foliars throughout the season. We're just trying to bring a raw product to, to the farmer and cut out all of the middleman. So what uh, what was it that set you down this road to start doing this? Uh, it's something that I've kind of always wanted to do to really help the farming operation. Everybody's always asked me, well, what do you use, how do you use it, and things like that. Uh, I just want to be able to help educate other farmers on what can work on their ground. The biological game, I kind of call it the wild, wild west right now. A lot of farmers are scared to spend money and invest because they don't know if they're buying snake oil or a product that really works. So. We test and trial about 30 to 40 products a year on our own farm, so we have a pretty good handle on what's going to work, why it's going to work, where it's going to work. And as you've put this whole venture together, how has that helped you raise your game and your farming operation? Oh, it definitely has. I mean, the more you can surround yourself around smarter people, the better you sharpen your own pit pencil. So it's really helped us, you know. I think this year we're going to have an all-time high yield so I'm, I'm looking forward to that. The weather's been good, product's been good, service has been good, so I'm, I'm really excited. And through the TV shows, you've had the opportunity to uh, really uh, kind of collaborate with and pick the brains of some of the nation's best growers. How has that helped you? Oh, tremendously. I mean, just last, 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 last night, got to have dinner with, with, with Dan, Dan and, and, and Melissa, and, and, yeah, and on the Podfeller side, get to talk to those guys whenever I want and we just collaborate back and forth we talk hey look at this product look at this product and we all have a very open mind because we all want to get better so it's it's been a blessing and putting that out there uh, it helps to uh, make the whole industry better oh well I, absolutely and, and that's the thing that I hope people understand that you know we're not saying that you have to have the yields that we have everywhere but we're constantly testing and trying different products on these shows to see what works, how it works, where it works, and why. So that way, when you watch the show or you, you can talk to us or, or ask us, we have a pretty good pretty good understanding. And we come from so many different places, and we have some has irrigation, some don't, different CCC. So we can really bounce different ideas off, off of each other. So if folks want to find out more about Advanced Yield Select Cropped Inputs, where can they find more? Then go to www.advancedshield.com and click on the page, and there's everything that, that you would want to learn. Excellent. Well, Corey, thank you so much for taking the time to join us here on Inside Farm Life, and we look forward to uh, catching up with you down the road here. Uh, I know you're just down the road from the uh, site of the uh, Farm uh, Science Review Show that's going to be coming up here in a couple of weeks. Yep. We will have a booth there, and uh, we're going to have a special guest at that booth, so Make sure you uh, you swing by. I think it's uh, September 20th through the 22nd in London, Ohio. So if you're in the area, please stop by. Even more special than yourself. I think so. Oh, man. Well, that's all we get right now. But uh, you know, if you're heading to the Farm Science Review, make sure you go check him out. And, uh, again, we've been speaking with Corey Atley. He's a member of the Corn Warriors and Podfather and also part of Advanced Yield Select Crop Inputs. Back here from Farm Progress 2021, Decatur, Illinois. Had a chance to check out uh, with another Illinois farmer now, Dan Lipkus. Dan, welcome into Inside Farm Life. Hey, you bet. Thank you. And of course, Dan is with, uh, he's been on the Corn Warriors TV show, and uh, you may have seen him here on RFD TV, Carbon TV, Amazon Prime, or uh, any of those places here. And uh, Dan, how are things going here this growing season? Well, we've had 2021's kind of been a tough one. I guess farmers, we always complain about everything, but boy, we've had, uh, you know, we started off great. We were, we had a dry spring, so that's great for getting things uh, started. But then uh, we had a frost May 9th and 10th, uh, did some damage to some beans. And then May 30th, we had a really good frost, uh, took our corn down pretty bad. Uh, 
every cornfield was affected. It didn't kill it, but it, it stunted it enough that uh, we're seeing the results of some of that now. Uh, it came in at about V5, V6, so some of our, uh, our girth or our rows around, I think it suffered by two to four rows around because of that uh, severe stress at that V5, V6. And we got a little bit of rain, and then it went back to severe dry. We are at home now. Uh, the crops are dead and dying. Uh, sand ground's done. It's getting close to harvesting. It'll be way below normal. Our better ground will be a good 25% off potential, maybe more. It's, it's pretty tough. We're in a narrow band up there. Kind of sucks right where we're at. 15 miles north, it ain't bad, and 15 miles south, it ain't bad. So we just drew the, the short straw this year, I guess. And when will you guys start harvest? Well, I, guys at home are already chopping. We, we're about ready to. Uh, so they've started with that. Uh, there'll be some beans combine probably in a week on the light ground that have already have already died. So season five of Corn Warriors is starting to uh, uh, get going here. That'll be uh, within the next couple of weeks. What should folks expect from that this year? Well, like normal, I mean, I think we're trying to bring a lot of good information with Corn Warriors. It's not just, uh, oh, I was going to say entertainment. We try to bring some knowledge with the entertainment. You know, we're, I'm always trying to show some of the things I'm doing on our farm, as the other guys are, some high-yield strategies and uh, different little things that make a difference, and that's what we try to show, uh, show on the show. How has it changed for you over the years, especially with the visibility being on the show? Because there's so many companies out there when you think about biologicals and, and fertilizer companies, seed companies, everybody uh, wanting you to try the latest and greatest thing. Uh, how much room is there for you to, to be able to play with some of that stuff? And how much do you enjoy that part of it? Well, we're actually playing with a lot of different things because of uh, the people we've met and the relationships that uh, we have obtained after, you know, being on the show. So. We're trying a lot of different things. Uh, you know, there's actually probably a, just a medium to small percentage of things that actually we feel work and work well, you know, but, it, but you gotta do that to learn and that's how you find those things. We do those on our highest yield acres and uh, if we feel there's an ROI or they're worth doing, then we move them into all of our ground and there's, you know, certain things we've done that with and that we've, it's, uh, we don't test anymore, we just know it works. So at this stage in the game, as far as your farming career, uh, are you having fun doing it? Is it something that uh, is more fun, less fun? How, how's that these days? Well, I wouldn't be doing it if it wasn't fun. I mean, that's a nice thing of being in the farming community. If you're, if you're a farmer, you love what you do. Uh, you would have got out, it, out of it by now if you didn't love it. It's, uh, the money's not that good. It's hard work. Uh, there's, uh, you have to wear a lot of hats. You've got to have a lot of knowledge. So you got you got to get up every day and want to do it. I got to love what you do, and I still do, and that's why I get up every morning and eager to go out and do what I do. We're gonna let this guy go so he can go check out more of this show, and then uh, uh, prepare to get back and get to harvest here. But Dan, thank you so much for taking the time to join us here on Inside Farm Life, and I encourage everybody to uh, go check out the season five of Corn Warriors on RFD TV, Carbon TV, Amazon Prime, and. Uh, CornWarriorsTV.com. Yeah, thanks for being here. We're going to get on and uh, see some good stuff. Well, next up on Inside Farm Life, you know we get these segments uh, from our buddy Jesse Allen every week, Market Talk out of Nashville, Tennessee. And this week, we get a chance to do this side-by-side -side here from the Farm Progress Show 2021 in Decatur, Illinois. And it's my pleasure to welcome in Jesse Allen. Jesse. Brent, hey, man. It is, uh, it is great to be back at a farm show in person. Uh, seeing the crowds here uh, this week at Decatur, Illinois, is just fantastic. It's great to catch up with you in person finally again, man. I, I'm tired of talking on the phone and seeing you on a video screen. Yes, we've done so much of that here. And, you know, this is our first live show, or my first live show at least since uh, Commodity Classic at the end of February 2020. So to get out among people again, and you know, these are the people that we we uh, generate content for week in and week out. Mm -hmm. And you think about that uh, from a distance in your studio, wherever you're at, but to actually get to do this stuff live and see these people walking by and, and put it uh, in your brain that, hey, this is why we do what we do. That's pretty special. Oh, absolutely. And to get to interact with uh, listeners and viewers and, and hear the things that they're talking about in farm country, the issues or the good things they're talking about, whatever it may be, it's nice to be able to interact with folks and, and, and hear those concerns or those wins that are going on out there uh, across, the, across the country. 
Absolutely. And you're doing great work here with the American Ag Network. And we talk about that every week around 6.50 a.m. Eastern on Sirius XM Satellite Radio, Rural Radio, Channel 147. And we yeah. can check you out there. And, uh, man, uh, how has that gig been going? You know, things are great with the uh, American Ag Network and uh, the American Ag Today episode on, on Rural Radio each morning. And then, uh, you know, that follows Mike Adams' great show, Adams on Agriculture. And then, you know, all, all ties back in with Market Talk, too, and uh, just, the uh, you know, Somehow I keep it all straight, but, uh, you know, it's it's been great. Things are going very, very well, and I'm just happy I'm able to uh, to bring this content, much like you do, uh, to, to our farmers and ranchers. Well, I tell you what, Market Talk has been such a great addition to this show, and you know, as we poll people, that's the one thing that they want more insights on is, is the markets, mm-hmm. and you, you bring us such great... Uh, context there with so, so many great guests and and those people really do have their finger on the pulse of what's going on here in the markets yeah they do and you know I, I'm not an expert I'm not an analyst I, I always say that but I, I talk to them right. I talk to the people smarter than me who know what's going on with the <laughs> markets and ask the right questions and you know uh, I mean just look at it the volatility we've had for the last how many months here Brent right. it's been a big big key and, you know, especially this week here, we come in beginning of this week, uh, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, uh, just three down days in the grains. And a lot of that being attributed to and tied to Hurricane Ida in the, in the south in the Gulf and shutting down the ports. And, you know, there's a lot of talk that here short term and with the, with the guys I've been talking to that we're going to see some of the short term downtrend in the markets here due to the shutdowns with Hurricane Ida. Uh, with the inability for us to ship out of the Gulf, that's going to slow things down. That's going to give us a lot of bearish pressure at the market here the next couple of days. But we think about this as well. This is also a seasonal time where we put in harvest lows, Brent. Right. Um, so, you know, we're thinking about that and factoring that into what we have going on. And then just the general fact that harvest is going to be starting here fairly soon. We know we've dealt with the various issues, and now we're just at the point here this growing season what are we going to end up with eastern belt western belt we expect the eastern belt to be better than the western belt and really it's just going to come down to what those final yields are and that's going to drive a lot of our price action moving forward in the grains here from what i'm hearing from the experts and you know realistically we might test some lows here due to uh, just the downtrend with the issues with ida but there's a lot of talk out there that there's still a lot of bullish momentum just waiting to come into this market there's a lot of upside potential in corn and beans wheat prices are really hanging in there even though we have a a rough wheat crop especially in the northern plains but the price action that's there there's a lot of it there and also too you know even if we do have a short-term downtrend here you're still looking at five dollar corn right now on the board you're looking at tool you know 12.75 13 dollars soybeans on the board that's still a good price, Brent, and that's what it comes down to is that there's still opportunity for profit out there in these markets, and that's what I constantly hear from uh, the experts on market talk, and really it just comes down to not being complacent, look at your bottom line, have your marketing plan in place, and, and make sure you make those sales when they make sense for you, and, and don't wait. You know, If it makes sense to sell $5 corn, sell some $5 corn. Right. Right. That's what it all comes down to. So as you're out here at the show this week, uh, what kind of things are you focusing on? You know, I, I mentioned how I'm really getting a chance to talk to our, our farmers and ranchers and hear some of their concerns and, and catch it up with some of the policymakers as well. I know I've talked with uh, a couple of the folks from uh, NCGA here this week, a lot of different companies as you're talking you know, as well with a lot of different folks here and really just trying to get a feel um, for what uh, what the mood is here going into the fall. And I think overall the mood is there's a lot of optimism in farm country just with the way prices are and the way things are looking with the farm economy, even though we're still dealing with COVID on the larger scale. But things are looking good. There's a lot of uh, optimism about what we're going to harvest out of the field here this fall. So I, I think the general tone is is positive here this week, even though, we got a few market hiccups to work through here right, right now. Well, I think weather, you know, has been the saboteur uh, mm-hmm. throughout the growing season here, and that could well be the case going into harvest season. So that, that could be the one factor that we'll keep an eye on. Obviously, uh, nobody listening to this has any control over any of that. No. So we're just going to roll with the punches. But I think you're right. And, and it's interesting how much of that I think is psychological. And you see that now. People are actually getting a chance to get out here in person. And for the first time in 
you know, in some instances, almost two years to get out and kick the tires. And manufacturers have two years worth of new product that they're rolling out here. And uh, people are kind of talking themselves into a high here. And, and, and that's where a lot of this optimism, I think, generates. Well, when you think about the profitability in the markets right now and how that translates back into our farmers and ranchers' bottom lines, right. you know, you look at the you know, the recent uh, repayment on loans and, and, and operating loans are down. And, you know, a lot of things are getting paid off on the farm or they're, you know, things that bottom line is looking healthier and healthier as commodity prices have come up the last year or so. So you get to an event like Farm Progress Show, you see some new shiny toys here and you start to think about maybe buying. And we obviously know there's supply chain issues out there and that's a totally different avenue. But, you know, I think a lot of guys and gals as you mentioned are excited to be out here and see some of the new equipment and, and think about how they can improve their operation well, i tell you what man it's always an honor to get to spend a little time with you here and uh, to be able to do this in person here again make sure you check out markettalkag.com again markettalkag.com for jesse allen also uh, catch him on the american ag network your ag today weekday mornings about 6 50 a.m eastern on sirius xm satellite radio rural radio channel 147 and jesse thank you so much for taking the time to join us here live man hey brent i appreciate the invite and we'll have to do it again soon thanks much i love uh lo love being able to do it live with you here it's a it's a lot of fun i wish we could uh, wish we could do it live every week you know we i mean I, we could probably figure out a way to do that <laughs> but uh no, uh, I, I do enjoy the uh, the live aspect here as well, and I know we'll get to do it again soon. I mean, this is like Nirvana here. We're sitting here in about a 75-degree day, a nice breeze blowing, uh, <laughs> blue skies. It's uh, the total opposite of the, the basement studio I've been working in for the last uh, 16 or 17 months. So. You know, I'm right there with you. Mine, uh, I, I don't have much sunlight in that basement studio. <laughs> but, uh, you know, hey, we made it work, and um, we're going to continue to make it all work. So make sure you check out uh, Jesse and Market Talk each week here on Inside Farm Life. Gateway Seed Company was founded in 1997 on a simple principle. It doesn't start with the seed, it starts with the farmer. We pride ourselves in doing all we can to understand our customers' farming operations. We take the time to listen to their concerns, then focus on providing a solution to address their specific needs. Gateway Seed offers seed corn with trait packages from Bear and soybeans with trait packages from Bear, Corteva, and BASF. To learn more about how Gateway Seed can boost your yields and increase your return on investment, visit gatewayseed.com. Well, as we say every week with the business out of the way, now it's time to take things back to the country. My guest this week is here live at the Farm Progress Show 2021. Uh, the pride of Lawrenceville, Illinois, coming back to his home state. It's the long haired country boy, Adam Warner. Man, well, welcome in. Man, thanks for having me back. I appreciate it. Back from Lawrenceville, Illinois, right there where the improv flows. And man, how good is it to be back home in Illinois? Man, it's great. You know, being around, uh, being around like minded people, seeing my folks. I mean, you don't get much better than that. And he has been here playing the Farm Credit Pavilion uh, during the show here. And what's that experience been like? Man, it's been great, you know, um, playing four shows a day. And uh, every time it looks like we got a different crowd. So that tells me that there's a lot of people here at the Farm Progress Show moving in and out. And, uh, man, everybody's, you know, super supportive. And uh, it's, it's, been a, it's been a real fun time. We're going to kick things off with the song this week, Can't Hide Country. Tell us about that one. Yeah, so uh, I didn't I didn't pin on that one. Uh, my friend uh, L.V. Shane, yeah. uh, Logan yeah. and Logan Wall were uh, writers on that song, and um, yeah, I think originally L.V. Uh, had it on hold and he was going to put it out, and then uh, I think uh, my boy came along, which he probably made the right choice on that He's one. He's doing a little okay for himself yeah. with that one. Right? Yeah, L.V. <laughs> LV's taking off, man. I'm I'm happy for him, and uh, well, you know, one of my guitar players plays in his band too, so. Uh, man, it's all love with that guy. He's he's such a good dude. And um, but yeah, Elvie and Logan Wall were writers on that song. And the first time I heard it, Elvie was singing it, and uh, I I didn't really know him at that time. And uh, I was like, dang, I was like, I know that song's getting cut by him, isn't it? And he was like, ah, it's on hold. I was like, man, if he takes that Joker off hold or decides he's not gonna cut it, I was like, please let me know because I want to record that song. Uh, and a couple of weeks went by, and he was like, hey, I talked to Elvie, and he said uh, he he's he's not gonna put that song out. And I was like, well, let's get in studio before he changes his mind. <laughs> yeah. And that's how it's done right yeah, there, isn't it? Exactly. I jumped on it, moved on it, and, uh, you know, LV was happy with the way it turned out, and so was Logan. So as long as the songwriters are happy, I'm happy because uh, it's, it's, that's another one. That's, 
man, it's just a high energy song, and uh, the crowd really gets into that one. So I'm very thankful to be able to to, to be able to cut that one. Crylon spray paint, welcome sign. Population 609. Another one down to the guitar town. 300 horses carried me out. To the neon dream Might have changed a little But that don't change a thing You can let your head fly Like a hippie child But you can't cover up That wild side Suit yourself up In that city style You can try But you can't hide country Trade your rust red For a Cadillac You hear Billy Roots For a higher class Cut the woods down But they're gonna grow I just can't kick I picked them up out in the sticks You can let your head fly like a hippie child But you can't cover up that wild side Suit yourself up in that city style You can try but you can't hide country Trade your rust red for a Cadillac Your hillbilly roots for a higher class Cut the woods down but they're gonna grow And you're not new to the uh, ag scene here. You grew up on a farm. That's right, man. Both sides of my family are farmers. Uh, spent a lot. Spent a lot of time helping my granddad out. Uh, but uh, yeah, that's a experience that you can't replace, man. It's great. What, what are some of your fondest memories growing up on the farm? You know, um, like I said, uh, my granddad and I, we were we were we were best buds, and um, man, I, I, I rode in so many tractors with him. Spent so much time with him in the in the passenger seat. And, uh, you know, pretty much all the way up until the time that I, I started driving one on my own. But, I mean, it, uh, it was at a young age, man. I mean, I'm talking, you know, six, five, six years old. Um, now I, I was with him almost every day. And uh, I think that's the biggest thing, you know, just, uh, just the bond that's created, you know, by learning, learning firsthand from, your, you know, your, your, uh, not just your best friend, but, you know, somebody that just uh, is a hero to you. So, um, yeah, it's just stuff, stuff you can't replace, you know. And before you really got bit by the music bug, your path in life took you from the farm to the Marines. How, how did yeah. that experience shape you? Man, you know, like, um, at the time, like, like you said, I'd been working on a farm and I uh, just gra- graduated high school. Uh, my mom really wanted me to try to do college, so um, I tried for about a semester and uh, told her that, you know, I was going to, wasn't going back, and uh, she wasn't very excited about that because, uh, you know, war just kicked off, and especially, you know, when I told her I wanted to be a Marine, that made her even more nervous. But, you know, um, the Marine Corps, it's a special place, and uh, you know, I, I'm, I'm very thankful for that experience, not just for the people that I met, but um, like you said, how it shaped me. I mean, it just gives you that, that drive to, to never quit, and, uh, you know, that's kind of something that my grandpa uh, 
used to tell me he had a little saying he always it wouldn't quit but it was always keep plugging and uh he used to tell me that you know from the time i was a little kid until the time i graduated uh boot camp and you know i lost my grandfather last year and uh just uh i found a letter that he had uh, written to me uh from when i was in boot camp and the, the last thing that he said was you know uh keep focused stay uh, keep plugging love grandpa fred and uh Man, I love that so much. I, I got his handwriting. Uh, I got that tattooed on my arm. But um, that's I, that's just the biggest thing, man. I mean, it gives you that mental fortitude to to just to keep plugging, keep going. You know. Yeah. So uh, you know, we see what's going on in Afghanistan, and uh, you know, we're coming up on the 20th anniversary of 9/11. What do you want folks to know and understand about the service and sacrifice of Marines, and really about anybody in any branch of service? Yeah, man, you know, it's uh, it's definitely, um, oh, I don't even know if weird time is the right thing to say, but it's just, a, it's definitely a strange time, you know, like spending that much uh, time over there. Um, and then, you know, you come back and our current situation is kind of a cluster. And, you know, I, I lost one of my good friends just last year fighting that fight. And um, definitely a frustrating situation, but I mean, if I was going to say anything to anybody that's, you know, served and, and put in time over there it was would be that, you know, just don't ever feel like what you did over there was for nothing because um, it, it definitely, you know, meant something um, to, the, to the Afghan people, to the people back here, you know, you keeping keeping people safe. And uh, I know it can definitely feel that way because um, I know I'm not the only one that's, you know, lost buddies over there and had buddies fight that war and been there boots on ground. So, um, you know. Just don't let this current current situation get you down. Just realize what what you did over there did matter, does matter, and uh, try to try to you know stay forward and, and put you know keep going, be all right. Well, how did that experience in the Marines plus the experience on the farm shape your music? You know, um, <clears throat> I think some of the best music that's written uh, is from life experience. And, um, you know, written in a way that a five-year-old can understand it, but their mom and dad actually get it. You know what I mean? And I think that's the biggest thing is just like, you know, coming from a little town in a farm town in southeastern Illinois and, uh, you know, being hands-on, being out in the dirt, working the dirt. And then and the same thing, you know, with the military songs, you know, like um, it, it makes it that much more like it's. I don't want to say the word easier, but I think the music is much more relatable because the person writing it lived it, you know? And one of those guys who's really made a mark with a couple of those military songs has been Trace Adkins, and that's a guy who kind of has taken you under his wing a bit. What what has that uh, whole mentorship been like? Man, I tell you, um, again, kind of that uh, priceless information, you know what I mean? Like Trace is almost, I mean, I've learned so much from that guy and just, you know, one, him letting me and being nice enough to, you know, open his shows and two, like, you know, him basically exposing me to his crowd, his crowd also becoming, you know, fans of mine. It's crazy, dude. Like literally I just got off stage and some woman just walked up to me and said, uh, I didn't know you were going to be here, but I've been following you on social media ever since this, you played that show in Peoria with Trace Adkins. Yeah. And when I saw you here, I was like, oh, my gosh, we got to go see Adam. So that's just like, you know, a testament to, you know, how much he's actually done for me, you know. And, um, you know, he allowed me to recut one of his songs. He jumped on it with me. And it's, again, it's just priceless stuff to be able to watch a guy that is so good at his craft, you know, work. You, you, can't, you can't replace that type of experience with, uh, you know, anything really. Well, what's new with you with the music career these days? Yeah, man, so we got a bunch of new songs about to come out. Um, we're currently working on them. I got about half of them finished. Um, when I get out of here uh, and back in Nashville, we're actually going back in the studio to, uh, to try to finish those up. Um, at, right now, I think we're at eight eight songs that are going. We, we got putting out. So um, I don't have a title yet for, for, the, uh, for the EP that we're going to put out. So anybody listening, if you got some good ideas, you know, comment and let us know what's going on. Maybe I'll use your idea. But um, no, we've been, we've been writing a ton. I got a bunch of new music, a bunch of music that I'm trying to pick from. Uh, so it's a good problem to have, you know. What is touring looking like these days? Man, it's it's starting finally to uh, to pick back up, which is great. You know, we opened this we opened this year up playing a show with Trace in Columbia, Tennessee, and then uh, did, I moved on and uh, went to Ohio last weekend. Now we're here for three days, and then as soon as I get back from here, I got about three days off, and then we're in Kentucky for we got two dates in Kentucky, 
and then uh, heading out to, uh, to Jackson, Wyoming again for a week. So that's going to be a uh, I can't wait to get out there. All those places are going to be fun. It's going to be great. After such a weird year and a half, it's got to be great to be back in front of a live audience again. Oh, man, you're not kidding. Playing in front of cameras and uh, cell phones is <laughs> 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 it's not the ideal situation for sure. But, no, we're very thankful to be back out and, uh, you know, getting to play some shows with my friends that I should have been playing last year, you know, or 2020, but it didn't happen. But, uh, yeah, Jay Coot and I are going to be in Kentucky, and then me and Priscilla Block are going to be in the second date in Kentucky. So, it's gonna be fun, man. We're gonna we're gonna get back after it, and uh, hopefully it stays that way. Well, one of these things that we can't forget to mention: you also have the the great podcast, Beer Thirty. How, how is that going? Man, it, it's blowing up, and it's a great thing. So um, I'm pretty sure I can announce this now. If I'm, if not, uh, I hope I don't screw anything up. But yeah, was, we were doing the lot the Beer Thirty live stream, and then uh, now we have a TV network um, that actually got involved with us. Um, so I guess I'll hold off until uh, until they released the information but uh, it did get picked up by a tv network so um, now we're going to be uh in 40 million homes across uh, the united states so um that's super exciting for me i got a you know being able to expose my friends that deserve to be exposed and then also people you know um i got lewis bryce going to be on there uh, ray scott american young um some great great bands great artists and just uh, again i'm just glad i have a platform now where i can expose some of my friends that need to be exposed because they're so talented and they deserve I mean they deserve it they need to, they need to be found and you talk about guys like Lewis Bryce and Ray Scott and 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 so forth they're the reason why we do this show and for the Adam Warners of the world because we're trying to take true country music back to the country and it's just Absolutely. so great to uh, to, to have you on here. One of the songs that I want to roll uh, this week is Four Square Miles. Tell me about that song and what that means to you. Yeah, man. So, I mean, <clears throat> I got about three songs that are very near and dear to my heart, and this is definitely one of the top ones other than uh, Semper Fi. And uh, the reason being, you know, I wrote this song um, about where I grew up, our family farm, and we actually filmed the music video on location on my grandpa's farm and on my dad's farm. And, um, you know, the one of the most special things about the video is that it went number one uh, on the Country Network, which uh, I was very thankful for that. But so shout out Country Network for uh, helping a brother out. That was great. And, um, you know, again, uh, story about my grandpa, story about me. And uh, I just I feel like it's one of those songs that, you know, you don't have to be, you know, a farmer or anything like that to, to relate to it. It's just more about that relationship you have with your roots and where you grew up and um you know if i did my job right uh it should take you back to your four square miles wherever that may be you know right and nashville is such a grind man mm -hmm. uh, do you like to come back to that four square miles just to recenter absolutely because uh yeah you hit it on the head it's it's definitely a grind you got you know a few uh ten thousand to a hundred thousand people all trying to get that same slot so uh it's always great to, to come home, clear my head, hang out with my buddies that I grew up with. And, you know, those are, those are relationships, too, that you can't replace. So there's just something different about uh, being able to get home and unwind where, you know, people don't care if you're a country music singer or if you're a, you know, farmer or a carpenter. Everybody gets kind of treated the same there. So that's what I, I like that. In the middle of the hard land, the year 1954, an open cap John Deere and a hand-me-down Ford. A hundred head of Chester Whites, four kids and his wife. Granddaddy was a simple man and he loved a simple life. Four square miles of home where the corn's knee high by the 4th of July. Sixty-five on my way to L.A. Thought I left that life behind, gonna make it big someday. Stars out there ain't half as bright as the make them out to be. Might be closer to the sunset, but I ain't nowhere near as sweet as those four square miles of home. Where the corn's knee high.
square miles Those four square miles One other song I want to share here. We've been talking for a while. That's How You Know You Live, and tell me about that song. Oh, man, yeah, that's a fun song. I wrote that song my friend Jeff Anderson, and uh, it's the, the song title is basically <laughs> what it feels like. I mean, uh, we shot it in one of my favorite uh, hole-in-the-wall bars in Nashville, and, uh, man, it's it's just a good old feel-good type of honky-tonk song, and uh, it's, a, it's, a, it's a lot of fun to play live. It's a sing-along type of deal. So um, that's one of my, I love that song. I'm glad you brought that up. It's a, that's a fun song to play. <laughs> Come on. Paint your rent. Bills piled high. Worked a 40-hour week. Now the boss wants overtime. Tired as hell. I tell you what, if people want to keep up with all things Adam Warner, where can they go to follow you? Yeah, absolutely, man. So all my social media from TikTok to Instagram, Facebook, it's all Adam Warner music. Um, go check that out, and uh, you know, I'm, all my music is available on all the streaming platforms as well. So 
uh, all those numbers count. So I don't got fans. I got friends. So right. hit that like button, hit the share button, and let's be friends. <laughs> well, you got a whole lot more here with the uh, Farm Life Nation. And, man, we really yeah. appreciate you taking the time to join us here on Inside Farm mm-hmm. Life. And we we'll hope you come back again and again and Absolutely. share that new music with us. Absolutely, man, anytime. I, I'm, I'm glad to do it. I enjoy it. It's fun. So I appreciate y'all having me on. And we want to thank you so much for joining us this week here on Inside Farm Life as we cover Farm Progress Show 2021. We hope you come back for more coverage next week. In the meantime, we invite you to subscribe to the Inside Farm Life podcast, where each week we bring you agriculture industry newsmakers, hot button industry issues, educational features, and the best in true country music. The Inside Farm Life podcast can be found at Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, Spotify, Stitcher, TuneIn, iHeartRadio, Amazon Music, Deezer, Audible, Odyssey, and YouTube. We want to say a special thank you to our friends at Agco, the presenting sponsor of this week's show. And we want to thank them so much for their hospitality at this year's Farm Progress show. If you missed them at the show, you can find them online at agcocorp.com. We also want to say a special thank you to our additional sponsors, GoatLifeClothing.com, Concept Agritech, and Gateway Seed. Well, friends and neighbors, it's time to get on out of here. So until next week, it's Brent Adams saying y'all come back and bring along a friend. You've been listening to Inside Farm Life, a production of Farm Life Media. If you have topic suggestions for future episodes, drop us a line at brent at farmlifemedia.com. And be sure to check out our website, farmlifemedia.com.